Yes, this is exactly the same red chair as I've used over and over again on Adorama TV, but I love the red color. It doesn't really match the blue dress, but that's exactly what this video is all about. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make any color become, well, pretty much any other color you'd like. I also like this chair because it's really comfy. To be honest with you though, it's much harder to make this red chair go, well, any color but red. It's much easier to change the blue dress. So I think that's what we'll do first. Let's make this blue dress anything but blue. So with that in mind, well, I've got a few things to move around. You need to click on the subscribe button and the bell icon because you don't want to miss any videos right here on Adorama TV. Let's get a light set. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. Chloe's gonna be the model for this session and I've started with something nice and simple because Chloe's in a blue dress. Now the color of the dress is important because blue is sort of the opposite of skin tones. So it should make changing the color of the dress that much easier in post-processing. I've also got Chloe against quite a blank wall where we can add some texture in post-processing too. But first, let's talk about lighting. So up here, I've got my Flashpoint Explore 300. This is gonna be a one light setup, and that's inside of a two foot by three foot rectangular softbox. I've already metered this out for F8. Let's take a test photo and see how it looks. Okay, Chloe, quick little test photo, here we go. And looking at this, this is kind of the lighting I like. It's contrasty, it's nice. But remember, the whole idea here is to change the color of the dress, and a lot of this dress is really dark, almost black that's gonna make the post-processing considerably more difficult. My solution for this is actually to move the light and move it to a place perhaps where I wouldn't normally put it because moving it further away is gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna take away some of the contrast that I normally like, but it's gonna even up the exposure, particularly with the light bouncing off of this wall and filling in the shadows. Remember, at this stage, I'm trying to light the dress for maximum color rather than maximum contrast. So how does that affect the exposure? That's a really good question, and we should check, because if you move the light, you definitely have to re-meter the exposure. Okay, Chloe, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. Here we go. And I've lost, well, that's F5, so I've lost quite a bit of light, which is to be expected, but back to F8, so we're good to go. Okay, let's take a test photo like this. And that looks quite different, much more even exposure. I have a little shadow behind Chloe, which I don't mind, that looks quite nice, and definitely a much more evenly lit dress, which is exactly what we're after. So that's it, everything is set up. Let's take a few photos like this. Chloe, are you ready? ready. Okay, here we go. This simple lighting worked really well, but reviewing the images, I realized I could improve things by just changing one thing, and that was to move Chloe into the corner of my studio. Now, I like corners. They give a nice three dimensions to the background with different lights and shades, and the lighting here worked just as well on the dress, so the end results are gonna be just as good. I could use Lightroom's develop module. I'm actually using Camera Raw here inside of Photoshop. Either way, it's the color mixer I'm interested in and particularly the targeted adjustment tool. This allows me to change the luminance, saturation or hue. I'll click on that one. And then I just come across to the only blue thing in this image, the dress. If I click on the blue dress, I can then move to the left to make it go green and the right to make it go purple. And you can see only the blue things in this image are changing color, and the only blue thing is the dress. I think I'll go with a sort of purple color. Let's change the saturation. Again, I could make it, well, really intense or really just gray. I'm gonna go with something in the middle. Let's have something like that. And then the luminance, again, using the targeted adjustment tool, I can click and just make it just a little bit brighter, something like that. Click OK, and our blue dress has become a nice light sort of purpley color. And then just because the wall of my studio is a little bit rough and ready, let's just make a quick copy of this texture and pop it over the top. And that is gonna to help to disguise some rather bad plaster work on my studio wall. 
So it worked really well with the blue dress against the plain wall, but I thought that's a little bit simple, so let's make it a bit more complicated. We have a completely different setup. So now I've got this sort of greeny blue background, Chloe's still in the blue dress, but we've added a red chair. And red is a warm tone, a bit like skin tones, which will make it a bit more harder to change the red chair to match in with the background. But we're gonna have a go anyway, and we're gonna do it by ignoring that completely for now. We'll worry about that when we get into the computer. For now, I'm actually just gonna light this and get the lighting right like I did before. So I've got the same light, the same softbox. I still want it to be at F8. Chloe, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. And I'm at F8. So I've got the lighting correct. I've gone again with a more distant light, perhaps a little bit more distant than I would normally use, but it should give me nice even color on the chair this time. Okay, Chloe, here we go. Let's just come down here, take a test photo, see how this looks. And it looks really good. Nice lighting on the chair, nice lighting on Chloe. I maybe want just a little bit of a separation light. Back here, I've got a second flash. It's a Flashpoint Evolve 200. I'm gonna put it on quite a low power. Let's try something like, ooh, 130 second power. I'm gonna turn the main light off just so I can see what's happening just with that background light. Okay, Chloe, here we go. And you can see what that light's doing. It's putting a little bit of an edge on Chloe. And when I combine that with the main light, it looks like this. So that's the basic lighting setup. But as I'm going through the shoot, I'm gonna try and remember that it's the color of the chair that's important. So I'll try and make sure I see as much of the chair as we can. Okay, let's take a few photos. Chloe, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Inside of Photoshop, you might think the easiest way to change just the red chair is to select it. And if that works for you, great. But trust me, it's a bit more complicated than that. So I'm gonna use layer, new adjustment layer, and hue saturation. From here, I can change well, a whole bunch of things. I'm actually gonna change the master to reds because it's just the red of the chair I actually want to change. And to make sure I get the right red, I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool, which is just available because we've chosen a color. And then you choose the plus eyedropper and randomly click around on the red fabric just to add all of that in so I don't get any errors in choosing the color of red. Now I can change the hue and have any color I like, and I really can have any color, a much broader range of colors than using Lightroom or Camera Raw. I'm gonna go with the green, I'll take the saturation down a little bit and maybe just bump up the brightness a little bit like that. The only trouble is not only has the reddish colored wood changed to purple, poor old Chloe looks very unwell indeed. Now, if you're lucky, you might be able to use the minus eyedropper and refine your color selection. But unfortunately, if you get it wrong, then you start to bring back some color or at least degrade the effect on the chair. So in fact, what I'm going to do is close this down and use the layer mask that comes with the adjustment layer. This is a non-destructive process. And from here, I'm gonna get myself a paintbrush tool and just paint black and Chloe comes back. And they don't even have to be particularly accurate because remember that adjustment layer is only affecting the reds. There's no reds around here at all. The only place I have to be really careful is just where the back of Chloe meets the chair. So I'll spend a little bit of time just getting that absolutely or as close as I can right. And from there, I can deal with the purple edge of the chair. And I can do that by applying another adjustment layer, another hue saturation adjustment layer. This time what I want to do is affect the, the sort of a magenta -y color, I think is the closest on this list. So let's use magenta. And again, I can use the little plus eyedropper just to add in some other colors as well. And I'm not gonna click too much because I wanna see the effect first of all. So what am I gonna do here? I think I'm just gonna make it black and white. So rather than changing the hue, let's change the saturation and remove it. Okay, so I've gone a little bit too far and I've taken away some of the blues so I'm gonna add those back in again, just by using the minus eyedropper. There you go, that's absolutely perfect. Okay, I'm done. So there is the basic edit done of the chair. It's now gone a green color. And I'm just gonna finish this off with one last thing. Let's go back to layer, new adjustment layer, and choose a color lookup. And from here, I'm gonna add a nice little color effect. I'm gonna go with futuristic bleak. 
Well, the future isn't quite that bleak, so let's just bring the opacity for that effect down somewhat to around about 50%. And there you go. There is my original red chair versus my new green, slightly bleak toned effect. I probably already explained it, but if you missed it or you've just skipped forward to this point of the video and you're wondering why was it so much harder for this red chair to change colour compared to the, bl the blue dress? Well, it's simply because that image with the red chair, there was an awful lot of similar red things in the frame. The takeaway is the more unique you can make the colour of the object you want to change, the easier, more successful and more convincing the post-processing part will become. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Even if it's just to leave me your favorite emoji, that all helps with the algorithm. Of course, don't forget to, whoa, click on the bell icon and of course the subscribe button so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. That's just weird. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. <laughs>